want to get all of our mobile homes new construction and sales by the end of the year. So that's kind of what's going on with the department. Um, you had something else maybe on your agenda that I kind of maybe forgot that you said. Um, um, policy procedures or? Introduce new staff, updates, and protocol for best practices. Okay, um, we had just wanted to just talk about best practices. We just want to make sure that we're following all the policies and procedures and getting the information to you as, as soon as timely as we can. So um, what we would like to do is get back onto the agenda for coming to your commissioner's meetings. And I know that that had kind of, we had gotten off the agenda a little bit and stuff. So we'd like to do um, quarterly again. Okay. Are we on quarterly? So let's just make, uh, that's my request is that we can get on there just in case anything new or interesting comes up because legislation obviously is going to be coming in a session or changes coming down the line. <coughs> and I would think it would be important that if we could just talk about any changes that are going to impact us that, so that we can, if I don't know the answers, I can seek the correct answers for you so that we know how we can just kind of move along smoothly on that. So and I think that would be probably best if we could, again, make that request. We can, uh, this course would be one in March, June, September, December, to keep going. That would be perfect. All right. All right. Yeah. Very good. Is this a good time? This is perfect. Okay. Yeah. We'll just keep it this, what is this, the fourth Monday, third Monday? <laughs> a second or third Monday at whatever time. How's that? Sure. Sounds okay. great. All right. And whatever time you can get us on your agenda, too. A lot of times we're, we're quick, so we won't take up too much of your time, you know, but if we do come into anything, you know, uh, that take up more time, I'll let you know. So okay. that we can, if it takes more than a 10, 15 minute time frame, then we'll try to make that happen as well. And then again, um, for me, I would like it if possible, if anything, questions come up, if you have any information that you need us to research, if we could get that at least like at the beginning of the prior week so that we can do any research, so that we can bring it to you completely researched. That way we're producing documentation or you know, procedure or policy that's, you know, the, that's Sure. So if it's coming from you guys, I'm reading it. Okay. That's all I really had. I didn't have a lot. I just knew that we were wrapping up the end of the year, and it just seems like this year went by in a blink. So. Mm -hmm. so Doug, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, really, the only comment I have, and it's just something that came up within the last couple of weeks with the uh, corporate cost in school district. Mm -hmm. um, we had a. customer from Free Forks that uh, saw Crow Creek School District on her tax bill and wanted to make sure her taxes went to Free Forks instead of Crow Creek. Well, Crow Creek Schools closed back in when kind of trying to figure out if it's somewhere around 96, 97, I think. They closed before Tostin did. I have found documentation where Tostin closed and were merged. That school district was merged into Townsend, which was the same with Crow Creek. They were they closed before Tostin, but haven't been able to find any documentation on that Crow Creek district yet. Um, on the tax bills, the the Black Mountain tax bills print what school district they're in. It shows right up at the top. And I'm not sure how big of a job that would be to change, but I, I think, think it probably should, should show system. Townsend School District. Okay. Instead. I think that's actually in your system because it, in our system it shows Townsend. It so shows Townsend. It does. And I've actually thought it did a whole new way to today and tell you that. It has to probably do with something, some programming I'm wondering if it doesn't happen from when we switched from. Um, CSA to Black Mountain, Black Mountain, that some old okay. terminology is maybe stuck in there somewhere. And um, because we went through and we've looked at all of our documentation, and if it would have been Crow Creek, it would have been there last year in CSA when we sent out tax bills as well. Mm -hmm. So there must okay. just be a little glitch in that because right. we've got it set up in the system. The only thing that we would like to see is if there is something on it, we would like to see the resolutions so yeah, that we can put those into our documentation because if there's something that we don't actually have in there correctly because if they want it, if they didn't want it in Townsend, but they wanted it out in Tostin or in a different levy district, we don't know that because we don't have the resolutions. 
So we need to get the resolution just to make sure that we've done it correctly. For the Tostin School, the, the documentation I found was actually the fact that there had been no documentation for a certain amount of time, and so they just um, transferred it into the town district. It was something that was done by the superintendent of the schools at that okay, time. Um, but I don't think it was, I'm not sure it ever got done with Crow Creek. I know they went before Tostin did. One of our but, goals uh, is to have all of the resolutions for everything that we certify by um, the next time we certify. We would like to get a copy of every resolution for every taxing jurisdiction that we certify so that we can make sure that that data is in our system correct and up to date. And so I think that's going to kind of be a task that um, June and Doug will have to work towards getting because um, with the fact that we don't have all many of those resolutions, we're going by years and years of um, cons from discussions, you know, maybe it was discussed at a commissioner's meeting, but maybe the resolution wasn't updated. Maybe there is no resolution on file any longer. Those are things that if we want to make sure that we're doing everything correct and the way you want them done, because of course we're going to follow your direction, we want to make sure that we have the documentation. So that's going to be um, a goal that we'll have before we get to our next certification. And we'll certainly work with you on this um, Crow Creek issue, but I do believe that that's probably more than anything a terminology thing from one system to the other. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that's easy enough to resolve because I know all of our information that we've uploaded to you has it out in the towns and school district. Uh, yeah, just it surprised me to see Croker School District on there this year, and <laughs> as well as it surprised some of the taxpayers. Um, right. I've checked with, I've called the superintendent of schools in Three Forks, the one here in Townsend, and I've checked with uh, Harold Blatty from Mako. Mm -hmm. And in order to change them into the Three Forks School District, it has to go to district courts. Well, it's not. That's not something you, could, you or I can do, so and it's kind yes. of up to the schools to do that. Right? So maybe we can get with Black Mountain and see if that's something out there on, on their phones or something. Something that's weird that right. just didn't transition well. Sure. But I think we're safe in knowing, I know we're safe in knowing that we reported it to the correct levy districts, because that's what right. we certified it for, too, is we certified them to the correct levy districts, so those funds and all of that was certified correctly, just to give you that reassurance. This just being a technical glitch on what was printed on the bills, which I could see would be disconcerting to taxpayers that things that levy districts have been gone since, or that school districts have gone since several years ago, but I don't see that that's on the department side. I think that maybe that has to do something with the conversion. Yeah. Let's just follow yeah. on this. Well, yeah, and it's that, that area was never, never used for housing when Crow Creek and Tostin were, were uh, valid school districts, they, you know, they were, if they were if they were that far out, most of them went to Crow Creek or Tostin. We didn't have houses that were going over down into Hopeward's area, and sure. so uh, yeah, they're in the correct school district. They're in the in the Crow Creek tax levy district, so mm -hmm. uh, to change it. They're going to need to go to district court. I wouldn't be surprised to see them do that. But, uh, that's going to be up to them, up to the schools to do that. And conversely, I think with that Black Mountain, it kind of went kind of well. I mean, better than expected. I mean, I know we had some bumps and bruises when we transitioned right during tax billing time <laughs> to that system. And I know we had to redo a lot of our work because a lot of the work they Black Mountain didn't upload because we provided the information. But we had to redo it because they didn't take that download that we had done. So I think June had worked through that issue pretty quickly and um, mm -hmm. that transition well. Wow. Just um, a few bumps and bruises, I think, that we had mm -hmm. to clean up a little bit along the way. Some some from conversion, some from issues that um, had happened. I can't think, what was our seven to ten maybe tax bills that had to be revised? I yeah, we haven't done a lot of revision. So that's kind of, with, with changing to a new system, that's kind of, you know, that's a small number compared to the number of parcels that are affected and that had tax mm -hmm. bills and things, so. Yeah. Was there anything else that we had on the... Do you guys have anything? I have a few.
few little things. Sure. Um, the uh, Heidecker case. We met with Susan Swirling, who's the land use attorney for Mako, and we have drafted a letter and we have solidified a process. Um, some of the subdiv subdividers and, and one of their attorneys um, went through the Department of Revenue and was retold, well, you could just go to the county and you can get a refund back to 2009. That's not what we were advised by our attorney. So my request is, uh, please don't give any more legal advice to people. Let us go ahead and go through our process as defined by our attorneys so that people aren't getting, oh, the county's going to just write you a check. And then, of course, they come to us expecting, we say, well, this is our process. And then they walk away mad. So I'm hoping we can maybe be partners in making sure that people don't get erroneous information. So maybe just refer people to the county rather than making promises. Well, first and foremost, no promises came from me on any of those issues. I've CC'd you on any communication that I've had with taxpayers regarding that. So, um, and I've we've been very careful to quote, you know, MCA that you know this is up to the commissioners that we can only go current and one year back. Those type of issues. Um, I've only really been in communication with one taxpayer, there is another one who's out there that I just received an email on. Um, I cannot speak to what the staff did. The prior staff is they're not here, so I can't say what they did or did not say or did or not did not do. Um, again, I do try to, any time that anything comes through with the Heidecker case, I do CC all three of you on that, any communication, <coughs> because at this point the department doesn't want to get involved in what the commissioner's decisions are. I know that you guys have wanted to meet with your planning board or something like that. We already took care of so, that. I haven't gotten any emails, but if you could keep that coming and... and it was um, an older email. I think it was maybe several months ago, so that's, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm, who was the taxpayer? And I could go back and research it if that's... Uh, it was uh, Morning Sky States, and of course it was the meeting with uh, you and, and uh, some of the other folks from DOR, where this, of course, was first brought out, mm -hmm. and the ball started rolling, and that's where some of the misinformation first came from. Um, and then the other one was uh, Steve Cavanaugh um, Estates, or Rolling Glen mm -hmm. is, is the name of that one. I haven't heard of any more. But I'm just, I'm just hoping that, um, you know, if you guys want a copy of the policy so that you're aware, that would be great. Um, but just, just don't make any statements that can be taken as promises to actually set people to be um, angry when sure. they come to the next step. Actually, we, we provide them with the MCA on them. If we are talking, if I'm talking to them, or if any of the current staff are talking to them, they're, they've been provided the MCA that they have to say that you know, the department has no authorities past the current and one year back. We have no authorities. That's the information that's being provided. Um, I believe that that's the information that um, that our attorney has given as directive, and a lot of times we pass them off to legal in our offices as well because we just don't want to talk with them on anything that might have been discussed, even if you've had it in your commissioners' meetings and things. Um, we just don't have we don't have the direct contact with them because it's um, been a directive by legal to pass that information up to them. And then in the cases that I've received direct emails from them, again, I have um, sent that on to you. And I can forward that email back again, the one that, the one <coughs> only that I have had, I can forward that to you again. My email is L. Obert I'm sure. at co dot, broadwater dot, mt dot, us. And that should also go to my fellows. You guys want to give your emails as well? I'm thinking I have this. In, did they just recently change? Okay. So I'll forward it to the same email. I know that I okay. had, and I had a response back from you on it as well. So okay. I will just forward the only email that the only person that I've talked to. And I know Steve Kavanaugh had spoken with the uh, prior employee here. So it was my understanding okay. from the discussion. So that's all I that's all I know about that. So. All right, the other uh, request I have is I got a phone call and the message said this is the county auditor. We don't have a county auditor. So what I'm requesting is, again, so that everything is clear for everybody, um, in most for our citizens, is if, if you guys uh, do have a title as the county auditor, please leave the message um, and the title Department of Revenue County Auditor. 
um, or Department of Revenue staff or whatever your, your titles are. But county auditor is misleading and um, again, I don't want somebody to be mad. So all I'm asking for is open communication so that we can alleviate that entirely. Um, and then the third thing is, is we do have a TV district policy that I'll give you guys. And basically um, what we agreed as a commission to is um, if a lot obviously doesn't have a home on it, then they shouldn't be charged for TV for obvious reasons. If a home has sewage and electric, chances are there might be somebody showing up and putting a trailer on for the summer. If they're in the district, they should be paying TV. If there's a home on the lot, they should be paying TV if they're in the district. So, when we get our certifications at the end of the year, that's the responsibility of that department to let us know who should and shouldn't have it. We only put that based on the information that's provided to us. We don't track that. So. And I think you guys have the resolution. Do you have that now? And the history, the minutes that created the district and what the lines are? Um, we more than likely have. Did you get that resolution? And, and we can get that resolution and it should be set up in our system and we can put the fees and whatnot in there, but again, it kind, of, it kind of comes back, it's not kind of, it comes back to like the solid waste district. We don't assess the fees. We only put no. them on, and, uh, on the parcels that are indicated to us by the staff who provides that certification. So again, if, those, if that information is provided us at it, once a year, we will get that information put on there once a year. We don't expect, we don't go in and we don't monitor that, those fees at all until that information is brought back to us at the end of the year when we certify those values and we certify the special fees that go on there. We only do that once a year. So that has to be provided to us in either an uploaded document or a spreadsheet that tells us clearly who gets fees. Okay, so. Um, I think I did find a map. Okay. In, in hanging in the map case of the for the TV district. All right. To, and I'm assuming that, that probably hasn't changed since no. it was established. No. But right. So they would be set up on there. But um, I know but, that in solid waste, and I don't know if it's like this in the TV district, but if they just move in a trailer for the summer and they're only going to be charged a fee for partial fees and things like that, we wouldn't we wouldn't make adjustments on that. No, I wouldn't think so. I, boy, can you imagine the quagmire with that? Right. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did you double check that with um, our cartographer to make sure that we had that area? Or when did you get that information? I just happened to come across the map in, in the, map the case. Okay. Is all. No, I did not double check it. That. And we can do a double check to make sure that everything yeah. in the TV industry is actually um, on there as it's supposed to be based on this, just the resolution. So if there's anything additional special in it, we can double check. And any questions you guys have, feel free to follow up at any time. Anything else from the board? Anything else from you, Don? Public? All right. Anything else from you guys? No, we're well, good. thank you very much. We'll go ahead and set up the same time, same Monday of the month in March. Okay. And I'll, um, I'm not sure that, I won't be back in my office today where I can get that email forwarded back, that uh, dialogue that we have on that, but I'll try to get it to you tomorrow. If that's yeah, okay. that'd be great as soon as possible. It'd be fine. And, and no, I understand you're busy, so. Anytime this week. I just came out and I didn't bring my computer with me today. So. Yep, that's fine. Perfect. Um, what is the status of Senate Bill 56 for DOR this, this time? We just had a meeting what, three months ago on that. You guys know anything more? Um, no. Okay, are you going to push it through or do you know that? Um, is this the one where Senate Bill 56 is that for the specials that the county takes on the specials? Takes um, on, on auditing, isn't it? Puts auditing back in the treasurer's office, which is another reason for making sure that line is, is solid at this point, so that there's no confusion with the legislators. Um, I can get you the department's um, stance on what they're going to be submitting to legislation. On okay, that. I can that'd be great. That. I'm sure we'll be getting that from Mako as well, since there are so many commissioners that were. Yeah, and if they have it ready, I'm not sure what how many of those that they finalized and gotten you know all of their information together on how they're going to present it. 
see who's going to um, represent the department, see who's going to carry it, things like that. So um, okay. I'll just do some go through two things to see what um, and I think that leadership is, obviously. Mm -hmm. legislation coming out of the changes? Yes. I would assume that we will, because one of the biggest things that's, that's being put to legislation right now from us is that we're going from a six-year cycle to a two-year cycle, so that could that could produce quite a bit of change, depending on if that's voted in or not. Which, I, from, from DOR standpoint, well, hopefully that does happen. You know, I mean, I think it's easier to explain, you know, the changes and the highs and lows and values if it's only on a two years as opposed to six, you know, because of like this last cycle, the 2008, our values were much higher than what they ended in 2013. So um, from us, we're hoping that that actually goes through. I think that'll, that'll be a little bit easier on the taxpayers to, to kind of comprehend those changes. And there might be a fairness issue too. If they were assessed at very high rates in 2008, um, in 2013, perhaps they're being overtaxed. If it's a two-year cycle, that would be addressed a whole lot more right. um, on an equitable basis rather than waiting six years. Well, the thing, the funny thing about that is, you know, the six-year cycle has been in place forever, and so we've had those low years too, where everybody paid way less, and the, the, the values were low because we came out of a low in our economy, and those mm -hmm. values, and nobody has a problem with those years, those six years that were based on lower, but then when we come into another economy where it's been on the high level. So it can be argued on many levels, the fairness of the process and things like that. So um, I tend to stay out of that arena completely. I just understand that some, you know, there's highs and lows in it. And from being a taxpayer myself, I liked those years while we were in that depressed economy and we got to pay less and our economy went up in eight. So, but then now um, when we're coming into an, our economy actually and our, um, I think we're looking at less than a percent, half a percent of change in values since for the last six years. So our values have actually stayed pretty consistent, which is really nice, as opposed to what some other counties have had to struggle through. You think about being out in Sydney or in Kalispell area and some of those places, you know, you've got all those oil fields blooming and stuff up there. There's a lot of change going over there. So we're thankful that we're not managing those areas. And likewise in Kalispell and, um, you know, Whitefish, you know, because of the, the industry of, you know, just tourism and things like that, that's been a booming place over the last six years and so those values tend to change. We're out here in our neck of the woods, we pretty much stay consistent, which has been kind of nice. Our realtors kind of help us with that, and I think that the banking system helps with that on that too, so it all works out really well. So if the price of oil goes down to $50 a barrel, what is it, 60 something right now? They're very, very worried, oil companies, what's gonna happen? And they're going to be closing down. So how's that going to affect everybody? I'm not really sure how that will affect us. Um, I don't really, I have, I have to be honest, I don't follow that very, very much. I mean, we have, I have a lot to do on the property side of it. I don't kind of follow the rest of that. But, um, I'm hoping that uh, we don't have that much industry over here that's like directly in our counties that are going to affect us. I've heard rumor that some of the, um, I've heard rumor that they're not doing as much drilling and whatnot up there in those areas, and that some of that stuff that kind of they've capped off at the high levels. But that's only just the watching news and the same stuff that I've seen. Um, anything else? The only other thing I have to tell you is the reason for the slippers that you saw as we walked in <laughs> and the Virgile lamp is it's a fundraiser for needy families for the summer oh, wow. uh, from Rotary. So that's why we're doing this. It's not an everyday. <laughs> I will be plenty enough of this every day. That's right. Yes. Well, I was thinking, geez, we missed out on the memo and we didn't have our fun slippers. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I we'll mean, do it in March. The boss that took it off. Is that right? Because she actually had some fun slippers on there. <laughs> Well, thanks for um, seeing with us today. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Right. We are at 11.45, COS Reviews. Thanks, Doug, for coming out. <coughs> well, this Hello. is an unusual case. Hello, everybody. Um, this is actually a certificate of survey that was filed 10 years ago.
years ago in Gallatin County. It um, there's a 195 acre track down towards Three Forks, and this 75 acre parcel on this side of the railroad tracks. There is 0.8 acres on the other side of the Jefferson River, which is the boundary line between Gallatin and Broadwater. So this little 0.8 is part of Broadwater County. And the survey, for some reason I don't know why, was not filed at Broadwater County. It was filed in Gallatin. And this is a copy of the, the filed copy in Gallatin County. The problem is they must be selling this right now, and the title company has no problem with it except because it's not filed in Broadwater County, they don't want to title insurance that point eight acres. Interesting. So I've talked to Ann and Nicole, and um, Ann suggested that a copy of the file, Gallatin County, be filed downstairs. Um, because tracing these three landowners back after 10 years uh, and trying to get all new signatures and that sort of thing might be difficult. Um, I'm not sure, I just got a call from the title company. So anyways, we wanted to come to you guys to make sure, uh, and Ann can add anything to this also, um, you know, if, if that would meet your approval. <laughs> Also, is if, if they have to go back through that whole process, it's a very expensive process. For less than one acre, mm -hmm. it just doesn't make sense to have to do that. And there's no changes, right? This is just right. as it is. Just as it is. And that's okay. why Ann suggested to file. it's a file. anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, to just, um, because I can, we purchase this electronically from Gallatin County. So I can print it on Mylar. And I visited with Ann about doing a clerk and recorder um, signature block that I can add to it. Um, I'll just put it right here. That states this is just a duplicate of the COS filed in Gallatin County. And then Broadwater County um, can sign it and, and put their filing in. Makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, I talked to Nicole also, and she thought it was the easiest. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's 10 years old and just something that came up that, you know, for some reason the landowner didn't get filed here, maybe didn't think of that it was important. <laughs> All right. Do we have a motion to support the process as? Uh, Detailed by Bernadette. So moved. So I moved and seconded to <clears throat> follow the process as uh, Bernadette was directed by planning and the clerk and recorder's office to refile Gallatin County um, certificate of survey in Broadwater County for 0.8 acres. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Go for it. Thank you. <laughs> that is the easiest thing I've done. You know, especially after 10 years, I hate to file something that could be different or um, right. you wouldn't want to start over. Or, or and that. I think we're more comfortable with filing as is because of the discrepancy with the boundary line that came into play about two years with the change of the Jefferson River. Right. So just keeping it as is is the Exactly, the Jefferson River could have moved in the right. last 10 years, so and it did. Yeah. yeah. So it could be just a whole new startup of surveying. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so we wouldn't want to you know, show any kind of support for a new line right. um, that isn't accurate. So, yeah, this is easy. Well, thank you very much. I think that would be a whole new can of words. I do too. I do too. Yeah, so you made it easy on us. Thanks for the debt. No problem. That was Anne's idea. She's the smart one. <laughs> All right, so it's 12 noon. It's time for lunch. We will reconvene at 1.30. Anything else for the good of the order before lunch? Do you stand for Thanks, Anne. I'm going to keep my precious lamp here. <laughs>